so first, let's see how can we make this thing faster, right? Run faster. We just look at RCA. The, the downside of RCA is we have this long pass, right? So we're just going from the, the right to the left. Um, that's where um, it's slow. How can we speed things up? That's what this CLA is trying to do. It's trying to do. First, CLA means carry look ahead. Uh, all we are trying to do is to, to compute the carries in groups. And some of this, uh, so, so that a certain part of the carry can, can be done in parallel. So this is the key idea. First, there's this notion of group and there's this notion of parallelization. I'm gonna make it clear, okay? But the, the goal here is to speed up the, the path of the carry, okay? Um, but before we go there, um, let's talk about some more basic concept. Also, I'll give you uh, some additional notations. So I'll introduce some additional uh, variables as well. First, um, let's try to break it down, right? You know, we worry so much about the carry for RCA, that's the, that's the longest pass, right? Uh, but let's try, try to break down the, the different scenarios of, of the carry. First, we can say that uh, there are two scenarios. One is for each bit position, for each bit position, a carry can be either generated or propagated. What I mean by generated? So if you look at this column, we have two ones. Right? A is one, this A I is one, B I is one. So that's where, you know, regardless of the carry into this bit position, we will have a carry out. Make sense? So that's where we say that this bit position or this column generates the carry. All right. Same thing here. We generate a carry. Right? Since we have two ones, we really don't care about the carrying. So regardless, we will generate carry out. This is one scenario. This is scenario one. The other scenario is the carry is actually propagated from the previous column, from the previous bit position. Okay, first is generated. Let's look at another scenario. Okay, uh, let me ask you guys. Uh, just want to make sure they understand. This one, this, is this one generated? Yes or no? This column, yes, right? How about the next column? Do we generate the carry here? One plus zero, no. But is there a carry out? Yes, right? There is a carry out from this bit position. That's where we say that this carry is propagated from this column. Make sense? When we have one, one of these input operands is a one, we have a propagate. If both of them are ones, we have a generate. Okay, this is hopefully also intuitive and straightforward enough. But we do want to break it down. So we'll see uh, why this is useful. With this in mind, okay, first is generative, and we have care being propagated. Okay? So you can uh, pretty much tell, right? So there are only two scenarios, right? We either generate a carry or we propagate. Of course, you know, some carry get, get killed, right? If you have both zeros uh, for both input outputs. Um, so given this, right? We can define so-called um, carry generation function and carry propagation function. So first, let me clarify the notation again. The carry into bit position i is ci. Is also carried out from i minus one. Right? This is my notation. Ci means a carry into position i. With this defined, I'm going to define something called g, g sub i, and p sub i. For g, this is capital G. Capital G sub i is so called generation function. So this is where we basically just end ai and bi. Right? So if gi is one, we may generate, we will generate a carry, right? Then both AI and BI there once, we just discussed this. Okay, similarly, I can also define this so-called propagation, right? Propagation function, P, P sub I. This is where we use OR gate. So if AI or BI is one, then 
we may propagate a carry, depending on whether there's a carry to propagate or not. Okay, this is basically a carry generation function and carry propagation function. Once these two are defined, we can actually try to compute the carry out from the i position with ci plus one. Can you guys tell me how to define ci plus one? The carry out from i's position based on gi and pi instead of using ai and bi. Can we define ci plus one? Okay, very close. GI plus PI. Right, actually, you're right. Right, so we also need to include the carry in, right? Because there may not be a carry for us to propagate in the first place. That's why we also need to incorporate CI. Very good. This is the, the expression. Right? Many of you are, are very close, right? GI plus PI and CI. Make sense? Any questions? So basically we either, is it either generate, right? either generate or we prop, propagate, right? two scenarios. This is um, how we define each carry out. With this in mind, uh, we can try to make it more concrete. Right? So given a four bit adder, uh, this is how we break down, uh, how we define right? so each carry out. Okay, we can further expand some of this, right? So see, since you uh, know this here, right? So we can further for C, C1, this is clear, right? For C2, uh, we can plug in C1, right? So that's where uh, we can further expand this, right? We can express C2 in terms of G, P, and just C0, the very first carrying, which is C0. And we can do the same, right? For each one of these carry out. C3, of course, is more complicated. And C4 is like this, right? This seems like a, a pretty long, right? Uh, and complicated equation, right? Expression, um, but let's try to make sense of this. It's actually pretty intuitive if you try to look at each term. First, this one, right, G3, Big G3, so this is where we have carried from this uh, MSB, right? This is G3, generated from MSB. What does the second term mean? P3 and G2. We just propagate, right? We propagate the, the carry generated from bit position two, right? Next one. So here we end P3 and P2, right? So this is where we actually need to propagate the carry generated from bit position one through bit position two and through bit position three. That's how we can read the MSB, right? This is the meaning. And very similarly, we can define the rest of the terms, okay? And this one, this is how we can propagate the very first carry all the way through all the bit positions. This is the, the condition. Any questions about these expressions? About P and G? Is it clear so far? Okay. Okay, very good. Of course, we can further rearrange this a bit right, to minimize uh, the number of gates. Uh, let's try to figure out, factor out, factor out some of the terms. This is the expression, right? And this is the corresponding circuit, which seems pretty complicated, right? But uh, let's try to, again, uh, look at this and I'll try to analyze a little bit. Uh, hopefully this is gonna be clear very soon. First, okay, uh, you know, these are the, the GMPs that we just defined, right? See here, we also have something called this one, G3 column zero. What does this mean intuitively? And P, right? This is like a bit slice, right? 
We are following the, the very long notation. It's in the register. Not quite. This is a this is combinational, right? We are just redefining the intermediate signal. We are just giving a name for this intermediate signal. Four bit output. Is it the four bit output? No, right? I'm not using this. Not, not, notice that. I'm not using this notation. I'm not using the, the square bracket, right? Although we are using something similar to the Verilog notation, but this is not the register. Right? And what I'm asking is what exactly is the signal? What's the meaning of this? Okay. All right, very good. Ambrose and Jacob, you guys are saying the same thing. Right? First, this is a bit slice, right? This is a three. Okay, zero, three, column zero, this is just a bit size. What this is saying is the signal basically tells us whether there's anything, any carry generated from this bit size or from this bit range. Make sense? Same thing here, okay, for propagation. So this is basically the, right? So we are asking, is there anything being propagated from this bit size, from this entire bit size? All right. Okay. And this is how we generate, right? How we compute C4 using G and P. Uh, I'm sure many of you are already asking, right? What's the point of this? Okay, what's the point? Um, one thing I want to quickly note, I'm going to make sense of this pretty soon. Okay. One thing I want to make note here is see here. So this is the very first carry in, right? C0. So look at the, the distance, right? In terms of the number of gates that you have to travel through between C0 and C4. It's just between the path between C0 to C4. How many gates do you have to travel in this case? Just two now, just two, right? If you think about the, the previous carry, right? There's a repo carry, RCA, repo carry adder. You have to travel through many gates, right? So that's where we spend eight nanoseconds. You have to travel many levels of gates. You wanna go from C0 to C4. See here, so there's hope already, right? Somehow this is already shortened. Uh, but of course we still need to calculate, right? And a whole bunch of other things. In the end, C4 still depends on this thing, right? C4 still depends on uh, this uh, G30 and also this P30. These need to be calculated, of course. So just if you look at just one slice, right, one block like this, four bit header, this may not be clear why we're doing this, right? This seems to be pretty wasteful. Um, but just be patient. Let's see uh, why this is useful. Okay. Alma is asking, does it take more time? Does it not take more time to generate G03? Very good point, Alma. Right. So if you just look at this specific case, uh, this seems meaningless, right? This seems pointless. But I just want to make a, make a note that indeed there's some hope, right? Looks like there is a potential short pass now from C0 to C4. But we do need to take, take care of these things, right? We do need to uh, wait for these things. But, but let's see, okay, why they are useful. Okay. Okay, first, okay. Uh, this is the things that I just mentioned, right? So we define G30 uh, G and P30. And this is based on the propagation function that's defined. This is a generalization, right? Defined on a bit slice, on a bit range. All right, so now that we define um, one block, right? We just look at the four bit block. We can actually use them to compose different blocks together to build a 32 bit, a much more complicated adder. In this case, we have something called CLA. Okay, this is where carry look at uh, this. Uh, the, this term comes in the comes in the picture. All we are doing is uh, we basically try to compose multiple four bit block together, and somehow this helps us uh, speed up the, the carry propagation. And we'll see why that's the case. Right, this may not be too clear for you right now. Right, so let's let me just okay, make it a a lot clearer, right? So first, what exactly is a CLA block? This is something that we just look at, right? CLA block is a four bit. And first, 
this one, right? This is something that we just look at. This is the, the carry, right? The carry propagation logic. And for this CLA block, we actually compute the carry propagation logic separately okay, from the sum bit logic. We have another piece of circuit that compute the sum, the sum bits. In this case, we just use uh, RCA. Okay, this is just basic RCA. Okay, just repo carry header for four bit header. That's it. And um, again, we have this uh, carry, right? We have two separate blocks. Okay, this is the, the basic component. And we have many of these blocks. All right. But, but one thing is, uh, I'd want to know that you know, this P and G's, right? If you look at this many different blocks, right? The P and G's, they are actually generated in parallel. So what do I mean by that? Okay, we just look at the first block. Let's look at the second block, this one. Second block, same structure. Okay. We have some bit logic and we have the carry bit logic, right? Some bit carry, carry logic. And let's look at this. This things. This things. Okay, we just look at the first right? G. So inside this block, we are computing G74, right? And P74. Over here, we are computing G30 and P30. Right? Here we are computing. G74, P74. Is there any dependency between these two? Is there any dependency? Does G74 depend on G30? Yes or no? Is it clear what I'm asking? Okay, right. again, we are computing these blocks, right? We need to. We need to go through, propagate the signal through this box, right? What does this block depend on? We, this block only depends on G74, P74, only depends on the inputs, right? only depends on A and B, right? So that means we can actually compute, we can actually compute G74, G30, P74, P30, all in parallel. Same thing over here, right? So we have many blocks, we have eight blocks like this. We also compute G, 27, 24, right? P, 27, 24, all in parallel. Is this clear? Let's worry about the carry later. Is this clear? Any questions? So that's what I meant by P and Gs in all CLA blocks can be generated, can be computed in parallel. Is it clear? If you have questions, make sure that you turn on your mic and ask. I'll type in the chat window. This is crucial for the understand CLA. Okay. All right. If not, let's try to further uh, analyze what's going on. Right. Let's now look at the crew pass. Okay. So this is the, my entire CLA. Right. So we have eight blocks. So the, this is block block zero. Like, Block one, right? This is block seven. Okay. I have dot a dot here. Okay. So where's the critical pass? Now let's look at the, the whole critical pass. Can the critical pass end somewhere here? I mean, for the whole thing, for the whole 30 bit adder, the critical pass cannot end here, right? This cannot be critical pass, right? The critical pass must be somewhere, right? Must end somewhere here, right? So let's see how does the secure pass propagate. So it must start with the carry, right? The very first carry, C0. It must start from here, right? Something from here or something from here, right? Let's take the longest pass. Let's just take the longest pass. So let's see how many, how many, right? How many uh, nanoseconds we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? 
we need to spend seven nanoseconds here to propagate, the, uh, to approach right, to calculate C4, right? From input, okay? Seven nanoseconds here, right? For the carry. Where is C4 used? C4 is used here, right? Is it clear? C4 is used here. Okay, first, the arrival time. Arrival time, this is something that we talk about, right? During time analysis for C4, this is something we just calculate, seven. What is the arrival time? That's called AT. What is AT of C8? This is the, the crucial question. Yes, what is the arrival time of C8? Nine, very good. Nine, right? Eight, nine. But what about these things? No, this things, right? C8 only also, also depends on this things, right? Very good. So while we are computing, while we are calculating this part, right? While we are calculating this part, this part is already done, right? In parallel at the same time. So that's where when C4 is available at seven nanosecond, you know, we will get C8, right? Over here at nine, nine nanosecond. Is this clear? If this is clear, then let me ask you, when do you think you can, we can get C28? This is also C28, it's the same signal. When? Okay, we need to go through uh, you know, B1, right? So we just go through B1, block one, we have more than, right? We have eight blocks, but right? we need to go through uh, five more blocks, right? Five more CLA blocks. We, for each block, we spend two nanoseconds. Is that right? Okay, for each block, we spend two nanoseconds. So basically the AT of C28 is nine plus which is 19. Okay. Okay. That means we can actually get the carry, the final carry at time 21 nanosecond. Okay, so Jacob is asking, uh, isn't it six more blocks? Uh, so we have, right? So we have block zero, right? block one, okay? Uh, we haven't talked about the last block yet. We have eight blocks in total, right? So in the middle over here, we are going through five more blocks, right? We have eight blocks in total. And we only drew, right? We only drew three blocks over here in this slide. We are, you know, I'm skipping five blocks. So that's where we have this, right? Two times five. B7 is the, the last one, right? But do you think the critical pass, right? Is this a critical pass? 21, is this the longest pass line? Are we missing anything? Are we missing anything? Very good. Right, so what about the, the time that we spend on this, uh, or RCAs, right, on this uh, repo carry adders. First, do you think we can, we should really get S3. When can we get S3? What's our arrival time for S3? This is RCA, right? When do we get S3, guys? Six? Probably eight, right? We talk about two nanosecond, right, per FA, two, two nanosecond per full adder, right? 
you have four of them, so eight, right? We have eight. Okay. So we got S3. So after eight nanoseconds, we get S3. How about S7? When do we get S7? Is it eight? See here, so we got C4 at this point, right? After seven nanoseconds, we got C4. So we got S7, seven plus eight, right? 15. Is it clear now? Okay. So when do we get, if this is clear, when do we get S31? We get C28, we just agreed that in, at this point, right? After 19 nanoseconds. When do we get S31? Nineteen plus eight, twenty-seven. Any questions? And this is the crew pass, right? This is the crew pass. We go from G zero, or you know, could be G one or P one, could be zero, G zero or P one, right? We travel through the first carry generation logic. And this is where we start taking the shortcut because this is a P and G, they are computing in parallel, right? At the end, we do need to go through this uh, RCA, this RCA to get the, the final sum bit. And we just compute, right? So this is 27 nanosecond, okay? And if you think about this is CLA, right? If you think about RCA, this RCA, we have 32 full adders, right? Each takes two nanoseconds. We just agree that with RCA, we need 64 nanoseconds. This seems pretty cool, right? Okay. Now we got more than 2x speed up by using this uh, CLA, right? 27 versus 64. Any questions? Okay, all right, very good. Now, this is, um, this is not uh, that intuitive, right? Uh, at the beginning, if you're still confused, uh, make sure that uh, you try to understand this, uh, the G and P logic, right? So they are indeed computed in parallel. They're calculated in parallel. So that's, the, that's uh, what does the trick. Okay, so maybe you can uh, relax a bit, right? Before I move on to the next topic, uh, let's relax a bit. Um, Let's do a hypothetical game. Okay. So here's the context. Uh, also, I want to you know, get the, the class involved. Okay. Uh, let's say you know, um, you know, you guys are right. So you are really enjoying right 2300. Right, you really like the the, the digital system. You know, you are really having fun with the binary as arithmetic, right? and you want to convince more people, right, more of your friends to take this class. Okay, this is a context. Uh, let's say you know you run into a friend of yours. Uh, this friend studies finance. Okay, this friend is really good at doing decimal arithmetic. Okay, and uh, after you explain you know some of the basics of binary arithmetic, you know, your friend is not that impressed. Okay, and to the extent that your friend challenge you to play this game just to play a addition game, okay? X plus Y. Uh, your friend will add things in decimal, right? By hand, manually, of course, right? And you have to do this in binary. And your friend challenges you to pick the number. So you can pick the X and Y, okay? It's up to you, this is your choice. But this is gonna be a competition, right? Whoever, compute the thing faster by hand wins the game. What number do you pick, which will give you the best chance? Okay, you guys, maybe um, instead of just typing in the, the chat window, 
Can you guys unmute and explain your intuition? So first, okay, first let's say, you know, it takes time, right? This seems like hopeless game, right? You know, uh, of course we are good at doing decimal, right? Uh, addition. Uh, this is also short, right? Uh, much shorter string and such. So let's say uh, we don't have to, so the, the binary number is already there, okay? You can, when you give proposed number, you already have the binary number and you have the decimal number for a friend. Uh, let's skip this part first. Okay, we don't have to do the conversion from decimal to binary. What number do you pick? So you get the highest chance of winning the game. Can you unmute yourself if you wanna chime in? Um, I would suggest picking powers of two because they are going to be a lot simpler in binary than in decimal. So like something like 2004, uh, 2048 will have three, di three non-zero digits in decimal, but it only has one non-zero digit in binary. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Any other suggestions? Okay. Also explain your you know, intuition, right? So what is the key principle that you use when you pick this number? We just have to talk about the, the this binary addition, right? How do you minimize your delay? Um, I would choose two numbers that are like the inverses of each other. So like one zero one zero one, which is twenty one, and zero one zero one zero, which is ten. Hopefully not those, because that's also simple. Um, and then the point is, there's no carry, so it's really easy to Very just good. compute it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys are basically saying the same thing, right? Um, when you pick a power of two, Elma, you pick two things that are sort of opposite to each other. The, the key point is to, to minimize the, the carry, right? Uh, Zach, what's your intuition? Why that number? You're not joking. It's again a really high power of two, so that would take oh, okay. an extremely long time, I guess. Okay, looks like you're already not joking. Cool, okay, very good. Power of two, right? Um, if you do have to do convert, if you do have to do conversion, what do you do? If you have to do the conversion, so which number do you pick? What's the trick? <laughs> one equals one, which one would it mean? One equals one. So okay. if the decimal number was one, then the binary would also be one. Okay, right. So you're also trying to minimize that, right? Um, but this is also easy for a friend, right? Which is a one. Okay, I will argue that first, right? And zero plus zero, right? <laughs> right Steve? Okay, that's the, the reaction game, right? That's basically the, the one that you guys are building with step three, right? If you do zero plus zero. Okay, first, if you have to do the, the decimal to binary conversion, you know, I will argue that you want X, to be the same with y, right? To minimize your effort, make sense? Right. And maybe power of two is a good idea, right? Um, but if indeed, right? So, you know, we take x to be one, so we are basically doing x plus x, right? Okay, and we are doing power of two. So also this uh, x is a power of two. What is the trick? So, what does this mean? Okay, first, what does x plus x mean? Is this a real, just do we have to do addition? addition? Is there a, a shortcut? Very good. Oh, we are doing, because this is basically uh, x, this is the same, right? This x times, times two, right? All we are doing is we append zero, right? We just need to append a zero at LSB. Is it clear, guys? Multiply by two is the same with appending zero at the end. Okay. This is something called a shift, which is something I'm gonna quickly discuss next, All right? This is a shift. We do a left shift. All we, all we need to do is to append a zero and then shift the, the whole string. And of course, right, power two might be a better choice, right? Because when you translate, you only need to write down a single one. And it's still complicated enough for your friend. Right? Okay, so um, that the key principle here is we wanna minimize the, the carry. That's what makes the binary addition slow. All right. 
Okay, let's quickly move on to the next topic. Um, this is where we talk about ALU. Okay, uh, we are going to be, we are actually already very close to discussing this so called microprocessor and this little diagram. Of course, we're going to introduce some piece by piece. We're going to start with ALU. ALU means uh, arithmetic logic unit. It's actually pretty uh, straightforward. This is uh, the concept is fairly intuitive. First, uh, what we want to do with ALU is we want to support a combinational uh, logic which can handle a different a collection of different operations. Okay, so this is combination logic, and we want it to support a collection of operations. Our collection is defined here. We want to support add, subtraction. We want to support some logic operation like or and end. And we want to do something like shift, which is uh, what I just introduced right briefly. This is a plus a or x plus x. Right? That's where we're just doing a shift, and maybe comparison. Okay, this is our ALU. Once again, it's the full name's arithmetic logic unit. Add sub, and later on, you know, we may also talk about how we do multiplication using ALU. Those are arithmetic. A logic means shift, logical, like or and those are logic operations. This is the, the diagram. Okay. It's also something that you guys will build as part of lab four, I think the first part. You guys will build your own A bit ALU. Um, this is the, the input, right? We have A and B. So we assume that we are only handling two input operations, based on binary operations. Okay. Um, and this is the interesting notation here. We are no longer using, uh, you know, uh, just a, a arrow here is a much thicker line, right? A much heavy line, heavier line. This means a bus. This means a bus. What I mean, a bus is basically a multi-bit signal. In this case, uh, we use a heavy line or a thicker line, a thick line, and we use a slash here to indicate we have a multi-bit signal, which is a bus. And we have an A-bit signal here. Okay? For both A and B, we have an A-bit bus or A-bit signal. And here we have a three bit signal. OP means opcode. We already introduced this. SI means shift in. CI means carry in. Okay. And um, these are the inputs. Okay. Outputs, we have Y. This is also shift. So we have something called shift out. CO, very now, right? Carry out. This one is a flag. This one is the overflow. And this is also a flag. This one indicates whether we have a zero output or not. Okay, so this is our ALU. It's a very basic ALU. All right. And these are some of the things that I already told you. Right? You want to support these uh, operations. You want to support these inputs, like A, B, carry in, shift. And we want to. Uh, produces outputs, right? carry out y and shift out, and some flex, overflow and zero. Okay. First, um, let me try to give a more formal definition of shift. We'll look at some more interesting shift later on. Uh, these two are very basic shift. We will first have we need to support both left shift and right shift. Right? If you look at this x plus x game. Right. Uh, where we append a zero. So that's where we shift the whole thing to the left. We have a left shift. With the left shift, right, for our ALU, we have a shift in bit. This is an input, right? We have a shift out bit, which is the output. With left shift, we are, in this case, we only shift by one bit position to the left. And SI, so after shift, SI will take the LSB. Okay. And the previous MSB, right? This is MS, previous MSB. This is the previous. Will be assigned to the output, SO, shape out. This is the, the behavior of this left shift. The right shift is very similar. It's basically the opposite. Okay? Uh, so this is where we shift to the right. And the shift in bit will take right, MSB. And the previous, this is the previous LSB, okay, will be assigned to SO. What does, uh, what does this right shift do? Okay, so we saw, Left shift, right? You can tell if you shift in a zero, that's basically a, a multiply, right? You multiply by two. If you shift in zero here, and then we shift the whole thing to the right by one bit, 
we are very, very, very good. Right? We are basically doing a division, division by two. Okay. And then, yes, so we throw out the, the remainder. Okay. So this is very similar to your first one left. It's very similar to a multiplication. It's a very cheap way to implement multiply by two. Then the right shift is a very cheap way to implement multiply, uh, the division by two without re adding much of a circuit. All we are doing is, you know, we just add some wires. That's it. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I should have you remind you, we do have a quiz at the end. Okay. And uh, this diagram is actually pretty important. So make sure that you ask questions. This is how we compose the ALU using different blocks. Uh, we have an adder block here. We have a, a logical unit block and we have a shifter block. There's three blocks. And uh, don't worry too much about this door gate here. So this is the zero block. Okay. Uh, we do have this mux, okay? See here, we have the O select, output select. Let's focus on this one first. We do have a mux here. We want our ALU to do different things in different times. Okay? If we want our ALU to do addition, what should be the O select, O S E L? This is the output, intermediate output from a control unit. Okay, you want to do addition? So we take this path, right? We make the max select zero, zero input. We want to do logical unit, we make it select zero, one. Right? We want to do shift, we make it select one, zero. That's how max is used. Okay. Any question about this? Yeah, all we are doing is basically we have three things, right? Arithmetic unit, basically adder, subtractor, and logic unit can you can do n or or and shift, which can do left shift or right shift. Okay. And each one of these will produce a, a bit output. Then we make the max, we create a max to select outputs. All right. So this is the, the last slide before the quiz. I think we are actually hitting a quiz right on time. We just talk about this column. Okay. If we just look at this intermediate signal. O, OP means opcode again. But we have some control logic that we will translate opcode into three different or four different fields. Okay, one's called OC lab, this column. Okay. We already mentioned this, right? So you want to do and, sorry, you want to do add and sub, right? We want OC lab to be zero, zero. I'm gonna take this pass. Okay. If you wanna do end here, we want them to be zero one, right? Uh, and one zero. Okay. Pass A means we don't do anything. We just pass A. We pass, we want A, Y to be A. That's called, called pass A. So this is where we uh, also select right? the, this pass. We select this pass. That's why. We also want to select zero, 0 for all select. Any questions about this diagram and also about this op column? I'm going to ask you guys to soon fill out this column for the quiz. Any questions? Yeah, I have a quick question. Can you just explain um, where did OR come from, like the fourth row? I'm lost about that. Fourth row. Oh, this one? This one? Yeah, could, can you just walk through that one again? Sure. Um, this logical unit can do and or. Okay, so this is the, the function of the logical unit. It's also a sort of a, you know, a black box right now, right? But what I'm saying is this logical unit can either do and or or two operations. Okay, so that's why if you want to, right? This is the opcode, right? So this is the operation that we want to perform, right? If you want to perform or operation like this, we want to take this path, right? We want to take this path. We want Y to be A or B, you clear? So that's why we want O C lab to be zero one so that we select the output from the logical unit. 
Is it clear, Alma? Um, sort of. So then, why would and be zero one one? Because it's not or, like not the. Oh, okay. Before. Right. So this is something that um, I right. So I should have explained this. Like this one. This is just the encoding. This is the, the encoding that's given. Right. Because everything in the end is going to be binary. Right. Everything in the end is going to be binary. Um, and we just assign a binary encoding for each operation name. Like for add, we assign 0, 0, 0. For sub, we assign 0, 0, 1. These are given. Is it clear? Um, yeah. These, these are basically defined. These are defined by the, the architect of this ALU. Right, so it looks like we, we are running out of time for the quiz, we can do it next time. But let me, uh, let me quickly explain these like, okay, since one of you are asking, just one more minute. Okay, we just talk about output side, right? This is the O select. We also have input side, right? B select. We look at this one, this is control, B slides are controlling the, the marks here. We have a marks here, right? On the input side. So if you want to do add addition, we want B select to be zero, zero. Why is that? Because we want to take the original B, right? Make sense? How about this one? Let's look at pass A. What should be B slack? This is the last question. We can do the, the question, the, the quiz question at the beginning of the next lecture. Let's pass A. Zero, zero or one, zero? One, zero, right? Why is that? Any guess? We are taking one zero here, which is we are taking zero here. So what we're gonna do is we wanna actually make use of this pass, but make use of this pass through this adder. Okay. But since we wanna do we want y to be a, right? So essentially we but y, if you take this pass, y is a plus b or a minus b, right? So all we need to assign is we assign b to be zero. So that's why. We have a pass A. Okay, so that's why we put one zero here as B select. All right, okay. Um, any more questions? If not, uh, let's stop here today. Okay, we'll look at ALU again on Thursday.